Did you know, in 2023, four people will be going on a one-way trip to Mars to establish a colony there, with further people joining them in the follow-up trips? This is not going to be a trial, or a let's see if we can do it, and if not we'll bring you home. No, this is going to be a true one-way trip to Mars. From the initial 200,000 applicants, only 100 people have been selected to proceed to the next round of the selection process. So what kind of person chooses to go to Mars on a one-way mission? The list of 100 finalists includes scientists and academics, as well as those that are just seeking the ultimate adventure. Mars One is not seeking specific skill sets such as medical doctors, pilots or geologists, rather candidates need to be of mental stability, work well in teams or with others, and have a general positive can-do attitude even at the worst of times. The flight will take between 7 to 8 months. The astronauts will spend those 7 months together in a very small space much smaller than the home base at the settlement on Mars. Devoid of any luxuries or frills, this will not be an easy trip. Showering with water will not be an option. Instead, the astronauts will make do with wet towelettes as used by astronauts on the International Space Station. As for food on the trip, freeze-dried and canned food will be the only option. There will also be a constant noise from ventilators, computers and life support systems and a regimented routine of three hours daily exercise in order to maintain muscle mass. If the astronauts are hit by a solar storm, they must take refuge in an even smaller sheltered area of the rocket which provides the best protection for up to seven days. A recent MIT study found that should the first explorers succeed in landing using current technology, they would likely survive just 68 days due to oxygen related issues. In the coming years, a demonstration mission, communication satellites, two rovers and several cargo missions will be sent to Mars. A reliable living environment will be waiting for the astronauts when they arrive on Mars. The candidates will go through an extensive training period and will learn the skills they will need on Mars and on the journey there. Mars One estimates it will cost about $6 billion for the first flight and about $4 billion for each of the trips to follow every two years. The goal is to establish an initial self-sustaining colony of 24 people. Mars One is a non-profit Dutch organization founded by Baz Landstorp, who is spearheading an effort to colonize Mars. Funding for Mars One will come from turning the whole event, both preparation and on Mars itself, into a sort of reality TV show, so you can see the lives of the colonists daily. But Baz says it is not our goal to create a reality TV show, our goal is to send people to Mars. The first crew in particular will need to devote a lot of time to the settlement to make their new home into a comfortable place to live. They will install the corridors between the landers, they will deploy extra solar panels and they will install the equipment such as greenhouses inside the habitat. They will also spend time on the crops and food preparation. Maintenance will be crucial to ensure the long-term functionality of all systems. The astronauts' lives depend on the technology present in the settlement. All these systems need to be checked and maintained regularly. Research is also an important part of the work on Mars, especially when the settlement is fully operational. What is the history of Mars? Did Mars have a long wet period or just a few wet years every now and then? When did the dramatic climate change take place? Is there life on Mars now? The astronauts will need to do their own research, but will also collect data for other researchers and transmit it to Earth. The astronauts will also find time to relax. They can do most of the indoor activities they do on Earth. Read, play games, write, paint, work out in the gym, watch TV, use the internet, contact friends at home, and so on. So where will they get food, water, and oxygen? The astronauts will be settling on Mars indefinitely. It's not feasible to send water, oxygen and food from Earth to the astronauts. They will need to produce those on Mars. On Mars, water can be extracted from the soil. The rover will select the location for the settlement primarily based on the water content in the soil. Water extraction will be performed by the life support units. The rover will deposit soil into a water extractor in the life support units. The water extractor will heat the soil until the water evaporates. The evaporated water will be condensed and stored until needed, but there will be 1500 litres of water waiting for the first batch of people. Oxygen can be produced by splitting water into its constituent parts, hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen will be used to provide a breathable atmosphere in the living units, and a portion will be stored in reserve. 
The second major component of the living unit's atmosphere, nitrogen, will be extracted directly from the Martian atmosphere by the life support units. When the astronauts land on Mars, there will be food from Earth waiting for them to use in the form of emergency rations. The astronauts will try to eat as much fresh food that they produce on Mars as possible. It is likely that algae and insects will also be part of their diet on Mars. Food production will occur indoors under artificial lighting in greenhouses, covered with Martian soil to protect the plants and astronauts from radiation. There will always be enough emergency rations in storage, locally produced or from Earth, to survive until the next supply mission comes. What you are looking at now is a list of every mission sent to Mars, both successful and failures. In recent years, the success rate has risen, but they have still had failures and these are just robots they are sending, not people. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.